for this more advanced feature in sampling, I'm going to show you how to um, select a single wavelength of a sound so that you can load it into a sampler and then loop it for an infinite sound, a sound that could be played for a really long period of time. Unlike the previous one, where you're playing back a particular chopped up sample every time, this is going to show you how to create something different. So the first thing we need to do in this scenario is to find a single wavelength. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and here we go. So the first thing we have to do is spot a pattern. So let me see if I can make this really simple. So if we start from over here, we can see that we have a shape which goes up, down, has this little up twice, down, up twice, down and then up and then the whole thing repeats again. So this area here then repeats again and continues to repeat. It's a little bit of a confusing one. Let me find a better one. Here we go. That's much easier um, one to spot. So we've got these two down peaks followed by here and then here we go. We've got two down peaks again. So same as before, I'm going to chop these up making sure that I chop from the same place every single time. So I'm going to chop it up just before it starts to go down twice. And here, just before it starts to go down twice. Then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make sure that this is set accurately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, that's it, move that one just slightly to the right. There we go. And again, move this out of the way and move this out of the way. And now that I've got one wavelength chopped up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as before, load it up into a sampler, convert to new sampler track, which is found here, convert to new sampler track. And whenever you do a feature in Logic, it will go to the top of the menu so it's easier to do next time. Again, I'm going to pick regions, um, not instead of transient master, the EXS instrument name, this time I'm going to call TED Talk loop. And again, I'm going to set my trigger note range to C1. So the original sample will be played back on C1. And I'm going to extend it all the way to G8, but this doesn't really matter because we'll be changing it in a moment. So I'm going to press OK, and it's going to mute the original audio file, and it's going to create this new software instrument, uh, software channel uh, track here with an EXS24 loaded into it and the MIDI note on C1. Now at the moment this will be a tiny little sound. So we now need to go turn on the loop feature inside the sampler. So to do that I need to view the mixing desk uh, or the channel strip by pressing I, open up the EXS24 and again go into the edit window so I can see where my sound is. And there it is, the sound is located on C1. I'm going to extend the key range all the way. So it's so I'll be able to play and hear the sound back stretched over uh, different pitches. Now the facility, the ability to um, loop isn't isn't here, so we need to go and view it. So you click view and you click zone sample. And this will tell you the start and the end um, start, sorry, the start of the sample and the end of the sample. We then need to view loop, which will add an extra section here. So first thing we need to do is tick it on. And then we need to make sure that the sample start is the same as the loop start and the loop end is the same as this one. So these two numbers need to be copied over here. So to do that, you can just Command C, Command V, and then this first number is exactly the same, so we're good. Now, uh, a word of warning, loop won't work if one shot is on. It won't allow you to do it. So now, the sample will loop back We should have a consistent So now that we've set this up, we have uh, the pitchability, 
we have the loop information has been um, copied over. We're able to play the and we have our long held note using that one wavelength. And all the sampler will do is carry on playing that one wavelength over and over, and we can get a consistent sound. If uh, you want to see what's going on in the audio file, you can actually double click on its name. And here's the full file. If we click over here, we can view it. And we have a blue bar underneath, which is its region, and then the yellow bar underneath is its loop region, where it will loop exactly from. So these, you can edit this uh, by grabbing it and reshaping it in here, but it's not ideal. You're better off doing it with um, by copying the information over in the table. I'm going to close this window, and then before I close this window, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check that my sample is in tune. And to do that, I'm going to load up an audio effect from metering called a tuner. And this is a really simple process. I'm going to play C1. And it tells me that it's actually playing back an F note. And if I want to be able to play this sound, this um, sampler with other instruments, it needs to be in tune with everything else. So this is really simple to fix. When I play a C, I get an F. So I go to the pitch over here. Where it says C, and I change that one to an F1. And now, whenever I play a C, this tuner tells me I'm playing a C. The tuner here is also telling me that I'm minus 24 cents out. That means I'm slightly out of tune. So, to fix that, I'm going to go into the fine tuning and add 24 by writing in 24. So, it's going to slightly speed up the sample so it makes it in tune. Play C, I get a C with zero cents. So it's perfectly in tune C. I can now close the tuner because I don't need it anymore. So just to recap, you have to chop up a wavelength, load it up into a sampler, stretch the key range so you can play it over multiple notes, view the sample, and copy that information into the loop region. Make sure the loop is turned on, and then finally tune your sample by using the tuner. Whenever you play C, you should get C. So whatever note you get, that's what you write in, and then whenever you play C, you'll get a C. And then you tune it using the fine tuner here. Once you're done, close, save, and you now have a sampler that will allow you to play back sounds. Um, to fine edit this further, you can use the cutoff and lower some of the frequencies. You could also go into the envelope and increase the attack. So we get a longer attack. You can also increase the release. So when you let go of the keys, the sound takes a little bit longer to die away. When you're done, make sure you press save. But as we already saved this project for the first video, um, you have to go to File, Project Management, Consolidate, which means to bring together. And then you just have to make sure that you tick the Copy EXS Instruments and Samples into your project. Press OK, and you'll get a little message over here saying, Consolidate Project Successfully Completed. Now you know your project is saved, and you can move it to a different machine.